the monthly software picks for FreeBSD are designed to highlight perhaps pieces of software or games or utilities, etc., which you may have missed or may not have known existed. Some may be useful, some may not be, some may uh, make you scratch your head and wonder why they were created in the first place, but hopefully you'll find them entertaining or at the very least useful. Evolvatron is, according to uh, the official blurb, is an interactive generative art application for Linux and FreeBSD, and it's to evolve images, textures, patterns, and animations through an iterative process of random mutation. And you're presented with a set of small squares, each one with a unique image. You can select one that you like, you can regenerate the random patterns if you don't like any of them. You can highlight one, make it bigger, and save that as a background, etc. So there's quite a few things that you can do with this. So if we look at the basic commands. You've got files, of course. You can revert. Uh, if you don't like what you're being given, you can restart or remix. So if you like the algorithm and you just want a different uh, style, just remix. Uh, you can simplify all functions. And they've got mutational parameters, function weightings, etc., etc. All very mathematically uh, complex. And there's a quick reference in user manual, and there's the about. And, yeah, it's nice and simple, and that's the way I like it. So, he says, on a very complicated mathematical program. Yeah, so there's a quick reference if you need any shortcut uh, help. Which, yeah, that seems to be fairly, uh, fairly good. Some command line options and keyboard shortcuts. Yeah, very good. So, and there's a user manual, which I recommend you uh, read. I haven't, of course, and uh, that's the uh, that's the nature of my review here, as is always. I also, you know, as I'm one of these people that likes to dive in and work it out. I mean, yeah, I did, you know, my better half, she likes to read the manuals. I just dive in. Maybe it's a male thing, I don't know. So, yes, there's the uh, user manual. It's very good. So, what can you do with these, you ask? Well... Let's have a look at, uh, if you right click, respawn, you can change the pattern, generate some new ones if you wish. Just keep on remixing them to the ones that you like. I'll keep doing it again. The, uh, the keyboard shortcuts is the way to go, I think, for these. So if you just keep on redoing it, Eventually, it will generate, hopefully, something more interesting. <laughs> it doesn't look like the close-up of uh, grass. But, yeah, uh, in the hands of someone more skilled, um, and that's uh, not me, you could get some really complex patterns. And I'll show you at the end some from the actual website itself, from uh, people who, who know what they're doing. So you can change a lot of... Of the parameters there's an awful lot of parameters here I'm not gonna even pretend to know what some of these are uh, so I'm just clicking uh, randomly on some of these and this defines really the kind of like the recipe you'll get it's yeah mutational apparently so they say and really, you know, just randomly uh, changing some of these. Because if you understand what these are, or what they do, you could create some uh, real Bobby Dazzlers of uh, pieces of art. But on the other hand, uh, maybe not. So we'll just randomise a lot of these, and then see what we've got. Keep on randomising, just keep... Uh, mix it all up. And again. And finally that bit. Uh... Yeah, okay. And we're going to go down to restart. Like, oh, it's a little bit more interesting. Okay. So, yeah, here are some, well, I don't know, professionally done pieces of art uh, using this program. As you can see, it looks much better than uh, the ones that I produced. And what can you do with these? Well, you could use them as textures. You could use them as background for uh, any projects that you're doing animations which i'll show you at the bottom and it's just really unique pieces of art which might not exist anywhere else i know this can be done a lot now using ai tools and stuff like that but if you want the more 
human touch, then uh, this is pretty cool. And as you can see, some of these are really, really abstract. And some of these are really nice. And sphere maps as well at the bottom if you want to uh, map it using um, POV Ray. And there's a bit of animation going on. I don't know how they created that, but it looks pretty good. Yeah. Much better than I can do. Uh, but then again, that's not a surprise. Next, we've got Amiibax. It's an interesting little game. You can uh, train in, get normal, tournament, high scores, options, credit and exit. So we'll select normal and you can select your character and I'm going to have Tom versus uh, an AI. So that means I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lose uh, drastically. And as you can see, it's like, um, I don't know, is it Dr. Mario? Or any of these little, these ball games where you got to get so many in a row, the same color. Bit like Tetris, I suppose. I don't seem to be doing too badly. The AI seems to be very slow. It's probably on a very low level, actually. Oh no, it's speeding up now, so that's not so good. But anyway, I'll fast forward this and show you the entire match. I won! Hey! Good. Next, we've got Defora OS Surfer. Now, this has not really been developed uh, in, in much capacity for a good few years, a couple of years, I think, or something like that. It's a very minimalistic uh, web surfer. And I know there's quite a few around. You've got Midori and, uh, do you know, my memory's gone. There's another one called Surfer, I think. But the reason why I'm showing this is because it's lightweight and... It could do with any, it's more like a, a, a call for people who perhaps uh, like to develop software that maybe you could get in contact with the developers of Defora OS and help out, or in particular the, the surfer, because I think it shows a lot of promise. And here's the GitHub page of the Defora OS project. It's a little bit more up to date than the surfer part itself. And there is still some activity going on there. There's also a BSD2 clause, which is, which is nice. It's never, never a bad thing. So here's the browser itself. It's very minimalistic, and I like that in a browser. And you've got the basic open, save, print, etc., as you'd expect. Uh, some basic editing functions. Undo, redo, etc. Your view, you can zoom in. Normal size, full screen. Uh, some JavaScript uh, console, which is interesting. Got contents and about, which we'll have a look at. And yeah, it's 2018, so maybe work on it has stalled a little bit. And you've got a home page uh, in your preferences. You can focus new tabs, downloads where you set them, a close download uh, when finished. These are pretty standard things. Network, direct network, or through proxy. And there's advanced if you want to change the user agent, which uh, you shouldn't have to do, but, you know, sometimes websites don't like it. So let's have a look. You've got your basic controls at the top, backwards, forward, stop, refresh, and home. And then, of course, you can zoom in and out. And for full screen, if you don't, well, if you want that. And at the bottom, you've got, uh, like, a, a test your security information if it's encrypted or not. And of course, we're not at a web page now, so it's not. If you type in what's expected, really, Google at the top there, it will not resolve it for you. You have to type in the full address. Drive some people mad when I do this, but that's uh, what you have to do on this occasion. Uh, accept all. Yeah, and it does load up pretty quick. That's one you you can't get the feel of it in the video, but that's one thing it does feel. It feels really fast. And we're going to test it out using the Acid Three test. I know it's not a perfect test, but it's something which I've do you know ever since I've been using the internet, it really uh, it's been there, and it's ninety eight out of hundred, not too bad. And using the same test in Firefox, we get ninety seven out of hundred. Yet I know it's 
different browser. But that's one thing going for it, which uh, I'll give it. Uh, I'll give it. I'll give it some credit for. Next is Acid Warp. Now this is based upon, if I remember correctly, an old MS DOS uh, demo kind of thing. Uh, I think it's been written written for. Uh, Linux and FreeBSD, and I don't think it does anything other than beyond what you're seeing right now. Uh, you leave it going, and it will just do its own thing and change patterns, etc. over time. You could, of course, use it as, say, for instance, I'm doing here, it says, coming soon, in 2034. FreeBSD Wi-Fi drivers. Yeah, there's them a little bit of fun there, poking at the, uh, the state of Wi-Fi in FreeBSD. But you could do something like that, or you could use it as... An intro screen like this one here. I could just like you could have your logo just coming out for you like that. We sound effects. So you could do something like that. So it has a use for that. Other than that, it really doesn't do anything else. But you can if you're creative enough to find some use for it. I kind of like it. Um, you could use it as a screen server. Just make it a full screen. I like it. It's kind of funky. And if you put some of your favorite tracks on, well, away you go. <laughs> And next is X Bubble. Now, this is a little game based upon Puzzle Bubble, uh, I seem to remember. And it runs very well uh, indeed, it does. You get single player, you get two players, player versus computer, challenge, and demo. And you can quit at the end, which is always useful. Have a look at the demo. It shows you how really it should be done. And this is like, I would imagine, two-player demo. It's just that both players are competing against each other. It never works out like that in real life, of course. Uh, but it's useful to see. So we're going to try on single player. I'm going to choose a difficulty level of three. You could choose one, uh, which I'm probably better doing, but I'll choose three on this occasion. And if you wait too long, you get a little countdown uh, saying, <laughs> you're waiting too long, hurry up and fire the ball. I'll just let it do it for me. There you go. So again, it's left and right, and you fire with the up arrow. And if you connect the colors together, it will disintegrate them, and then you can win if you clear all the balls. So really, uh, and it's um, there's no end goal, it's just go as far as you can. And I've got stage four cleared, now stage five, which is a miracle for me. But yeah... We could be here all day, which uh, we probably are, so we'll come to an end on this. The next game, we'll, we'll look at two players. Again, if you had a human com uh, opponent, you could uh, play the same kind of game, which we haven't, so it's going to be kind of a, a one-sided. Or you could select AI, the computer itself, which never goes well for me because they, uh, they always say it uh, way, way too hard. And as you can see, I lost spectacularly. And the computer won. And it gloated about it. So uh, there you go. Enough of that. It's a good little game. I enjoyed it greatly. So yeah, there's five little programs. Two games and two graphics, which is uh, kind of nice and round. Uh, it's got symmetry to it for the summer month of June. Uh, it's too warm to be doing anything too uh, productive. So if you enjoyed that, then leave a like. If you have lots of likes and you enjoy lots of videos on my channel then please consider subscribing and if you do subscribe then make sure that you check out the little notification bell because it lets you know when i've released a video and everyone's happy so anyway thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time oh and there's a little message at the end as well <laughs>
they don't because they've been teenagers they won't go to bed till way too late so yeah it's it's me sneaking off um, to record a video is probably no yeah it's not going to work out i can get a video done if i leave uh, loads of annotations and text but i really can't do one with uh, speaking on it which you know depends on your point of view is that either a good thing or a bad thing so, yeah, just thought I'd let you know that the next few videos, it's not because I've been replaced by AI yet. It's just, you know, the way things are at the moment. Things will resolve themselves in September. And until then, you know, and it also coincides with the school holidays of six weeks. So that's going to be even more fun. So I just thought I'd let you know, next few videos for a while is going to be non-speaking.